Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain how to solve the problem 1438 from lead code, longest continuous subarray with absolute difference less than or equal to a given limit. In this problem, we are given an array of integers and as the name suggests, we also have a limit and we want to find the size of the longest non-empty subarray such that the dif absolute difference between any two different any two elements from the subarray is less than or equal to limit. Now let's begin. So first off, every time we read the problem and uh, it doesn't matter where the problem is from, be it lead code, CSS, code forces or other platforms, it is very important to uh, read the statement carefully, even though in this case, the statement is quite short. But at the same time, it is also very important to make some first observations to uh, make solving the problem easier. So in the case of uh, this example, so the first example they analyze is 8, 2, 4, 7 and the limit is 4. And uh, if you see here, uh, every time we uh, keep adding values to the end of a subarray, the differences between the maximum value and the minimum value are greater and greater because we can actually rephrase this part of the statement where we need to see if the absolute difference between any two values is less than or equal to limit. We can rephrase that as basically checking if the difference between the greatest value and the smallest value is less than or equal to limit. So with that, uh, with that covered, uh, we can also see this at the same time with other uh, subarrays. Basically, here, for example, the differences are once again increasing, and we can easily prove that that is the case for every other bigger subarray, as there are two only th two things that can happen. We either have a smaller minimum or a greater maximum, and both of these things can only make the difference greater. So basically, we now want to find a way to find the longest subarray such that uh, the answer can be uh, such that it fulfills the condition and uh, the answer would be that length. Now, there are several ways of going uh, as far as this problem goes. So let's analyze, let's say, the uh, second subarray. Actually, the second array, and the limit they are give they are giving us is five. Now, uh, we can uh, first talk about a very uh, simple solution that would run in n cube, and the way the solution goes is that we just fix the ends of each subarray with two for loops. We fix the maximum and the minimum and we want to see how much are these values in the end with another for loop. And this would be n cube, and it is the simplest solution to this problem. Now, let's talk about how can we optimize this. So first off, uh, we can optimize these uh, two for loops uh, by relying on storing the maximum and the minimum only here and then having another for loop that updates the maximum and the minimum just like we did in the third for loop in the previous solution and this would allow us to find the answer for all the subarrays that are ending that are starting at a given position and uh, again it allows us to also update the answer more easily so in short this would imply uh, rewriting this part of the code into having something like uh, we keep the maximum and the minimum here and then having another for loop where we update the answers and the complexity would now become n squared so from n cube we managed to optimize uh, the uh, for loops we had previously in order to reduce it to just one for loop. Now, uh, these are still brute force solutions and we didn't use 
the observation stated previously that uh, as we make a subarray longer, the differences are likely going to be bigger. And this, this gives us the idea for several solutions I'm going to explain. So uh, the first solution, and I would say the most obvious one uh, among the better ones, would be to uh, have a binary search over the answer. The way this would work would be to just uh, fix the uh, potential length as being between 1 and n. And in a step of the binary search, we want to find if uh, we have a subarray of that given length such that um, the condition is fulfilled in respect to the limit. Let's say we are searching for a subarray of length 3. And uh, basically, uh, if we were to just, uh, let's say, add a value, remove a value, and then once again check the maximum and the minimum in linear time, this would be even worse than uh, the uh, n squared solution, as the complexity would be n squared log n. However, we can now start using data structures we have in C++ or in your favorite programming language. So most programming language have something like a set or a dictionary that allows us to store values in increasing order. But given that we can also have repeat values, we should however use something like a multiset or whatever the equivalent your language has. So for length three, we would add in this, uh, let's say, dictionary, the first three values. And the difference between the maximum and the minimum can easily be found to be 9 by just uh, finding the greatest and the smallest values. And as we go in this sliding window kind of fashion, we can now find the subarray with the lowest such difference and see if it's smaller or greater than the limit. In this case, we found a subarray and we are going to seek for a longer length. Uh, we will see, for example, for length 5 that it won't work, but for length 4 it will work because we have this subarray here that will uh, respect the condition, have a length of 4, and uh, also the difference between the maximum and the minimum is within the limit. Now. This solution, after analyzing the complexity, should be something like of, log, of n log square of n because uh, we have a log n from binary search. We need to do linear scans on the array and we also need something like log n for this dictionary we are using. Now, we can further optimize this to n log n, but uh, Unfortunately, binary search will, longer, will no longer be of much use here anymore as uh, even though we will be able to use the fastest algorithm in a binary search like manner, it won't make much sense. So the first solution, which is n log n, is a direct optimization of uh, this approach here. And instead of using uh, a binary search over the answer, we can rely on the same logic to do something like a two-pointer approach where we uh, fix the left end and we try to go as much as possible with the right end. And basically at each step we want to check if it makes sense to add the uh, current value or just remove the leftmost value. Something It will work similarly to what I presented so far. And in the end, the complexity would be n log n. We are getting now into the territory where these solutions are uh, probably going to get accepted regardless of the programming language. But uh, there, are also, there is also one better solution. So uh, basically, uh, why do we even need sets or dictionaries? So the reason I'm asking this is because uh, we can rely on another data structure that's less of a set and uh, can help us get to towards O of n solution. So really O of n? Well, it's actually pretty simple, for at least for someone who 
has seen this at least once or twice, but it's actually a very good educational thing to talk about. So I'm going to present a, a data structure called the minimum Q or DQ, which uh, helps us solve this problem. So basically the way this will go is that uh, a DQ can be used both as a stack and as a queue. And we're going to use both of these uh, applications in the problem we are uh, now reviewing. So uh, I'm going to delete this and uh, have this example array written once again to showcase the usage of the DQ. And it will work together with the two pointer approach I just described. So let's say that we have left equals zero and right equals one. Uh, at first we will just uh, we will just push this uh, position zero in both of the DQs as we are going to use a DQ for each of the minimum and the maximum. So now for the next value, all we want to do in these DQs is to remove the values that are uh, greater, respectively smaller, uh, from the uh, DQ, as our goal is to seek to find only the potential minimums. So a value that has been replaced in the DQ by something smaller in the minimum DQ can never be minimum as long as we already consider that smaller value. So for the minimum, we are going to uh, replace this zero as we only keep the positions and for maximums we won't do anything. Now, in order to find the difference between the minimum and the maximum, we need to uh, we need to retrieve the value at the index from here as well as the index from here, and this allows us to easily check if it's better to add the next value to the DQ or to remove the front value. And in order to remove the front value, we just need to see in whichever positions this left position shows up at. So in this case, uh, with one, the difference is already too big. So we're going to remove this other zero regardless and make this left one. However, we will be able to uh, consider the uh, right positions up to here, but instead we'll have to replace the maximum every time. So again, the difference is good. And we can say that the length of this subarray is the optimum one. However, by adding seven, we can no longer keep one. So once again, we are going to have the same approach, replace values. And then for the last position, position five, take note that I use zero index. For position five, we will replace everything from here. And keep the five. And uh, we already we already have uh, a sub array that's of length four and respects the conditions. So the answer will be four. And we managed to actually optimize the solution to O of n. So uh, think at how far we came along with solving this problem. So uh, we came from an n cube solution that. Uh, at first glance had no potential of optimizing to an O of N solution that also involves a very nice algorithm and uh, something I really like uh, explaining as well as teaching. So now I'm going to show you both of my solutions. So uh, they are also in my GitHub page. Uh, you will see it in the description. So I'm going to start with the, uh, with the set solution. So basically here, I implemented the two pointers approach, but uh, I implemented it using sets. So uh, actually a multi-set because there can be repeats. And at each position, uh, we want to see if we can add the current value or not. You will see this logic repeating throughout both of the solutions. So in one solution, we insert the value using sets. In the other solution, we are carefully removing the values from the DQ and then pushing back the position at the end. Again, if this doesn't work, the same thing will happen. We either remove, but you should be careful to remove only with lower bound, or 
you need to basically just remove the front value from the DQ and at the same time increment the left position. And every time we just want to find the maximum between the lengths uh, at each step. And of course return the final length in the end. So in order to uh, conclude this video, we came from explaining an n-cube solution to explaining uh, an O of n solution by going step by step into the optimizations that are required so that you can ace this interview question and uh, get your dream job in case you will ever get this question. So uh, thanks once again for watching. I hope you found this uh, format useful and let me know in the chat if you have any feedback and as usual uh, please subscribe to the channel like the video share it with your friends and let's get along in this coding journey so that you can learn as many things as possible so thanks for watching and see you next time cheers